In this video, we're going to look at how to create a quick and easy, editable, glitchy text effect in Photoshop. Uh, it's going to be kind of like the one you see right there. And it's pretty easy. We make it with folders, smart objects, going to teach you some uh, non-destructive methods that I'm trying to utilize here. I always try to teach these and, uh, and we'll get into some cool effects. I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. Let's open up Photoshop and get started. So here's what you probably saw in the thumbnail. I'm going to create a new document in Photoshop just by using the file dropdown new. 1920 by 1080 is what I'll create at. Resolution doesn't matter unless you're printing it and I would do 300. And then I want RGB color mode. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a background. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle, which in the new update of Photoshop apparently draws from the center out without pressing any buttons. Don't know if that's the same for you, but they have updated that. Now once I have that drawn, I'm just going to double click on the uh, thumbnail over here to pick a color. I'm going to pick something that's sort of not completely black, but maybe a little bit charcoal in color and hit OK. Now if double clicking that doesn't work, maybe check the fill and stroke up here. You'll want your fill to be the color and not the stroke. Alright, so we've got the background. Let's create some text out here. Form a new text layer by finding the type tool over here. Right there it is. And then if I click right here, it's going to type on my rectangle. So I'm going to make sure I lock this rectangle by selecting that layer, hitting the lock button. Now I'm not going to type on top of it accidentally. Uh, so we can just click in here. And wowzers, we got some large text. But let's type in glitchy, just like that. I'm going to select it all by pressing Command or Control A. Centered and uh, we're gonna make it a little bit smaller, maybe something like 100 point or even like 75. There we go, that'll fit the page better. Go back to my direct selection or my selection tool or my move tool actually, I'm used to Illustrator. Uh, Command or Control A to select all and with this move tool selected, I can actually center everything up with my alignment options up here. So now we've got glitchy right in the middle of our page. What we need to do first is create a smart object. I'm going to right click my layer, convert to smart object. Now I can't edit this directly anymore, but if I double click on my thumbnail, I can open up that smart object. It even looks like a whole different Photoshop file. You can go back and forth between what you're working on and this smart object file. Now the first thing I want to do here is change the canvas size. I'm going to go to my image drop down canvas size. I'm going to make this the same size as the canvas that we're using. Hit OK. The reason I'm setting this up is to make it easily editable later. So now we got glitchy over here. We could still edit this text, but we're going to keep it as glitchy for now. Make sure you hit Command or Control S to save. Once you've saved it, you can exit out of it. It'll pop open and ask you if you want to save if you didn't. And we're back to here. So I've got this guy and what I want to start doing is creating the different layers of my glitchiness. So I'm going to start a folder and this first folder is just going to include my text in here. And in fact, I might rename this to text if I can type. There we go. And in this first group, I'm going to create a mask. But first, I want to create a selection to make that mask out of. So we're going to grab the selection tool. I'm going to start from the bottom and this will be the very bottom portion of wherever I want this first glitchy effect to start. We're going to just overlap our text by that much. And if I click the mask button down here, it's going to create a mask based on that selection. Pretty easy. I'm going to duplicate this layer after calling it bottom, batum. And I can duplicate that by holding Alt or Option, clicking and dragging and making sure I see this one solid blue line and then I let go. So now I have a duplicated bottom piece. So we'll call this piece lower mid. And then we need to adjust the mask of this guy. So unlink the mask to this folder and we can edit the mask without editing the graphic. So if I click on the mask, so it's highlighted, Command or Control T, I can now edit that mask. Now I'm going to leave this top portion there. I'm just going to grab the bottom portion and I'm going to hold shift so it doesn't shrink. And we're just going to grab this bottom portion and bring it up. You can see it reveals my text again. I want to bring it up maybe past where that G, the middle of the G is right in there. Hit enter to commit that. And now we've got this new portion right there and they line up right in the middle. You can kind of see a faint line here that we can fix later. 
All right, so I'm gonna link that back together, duplicate it again by holding Option or Alt, bring it up to the top. I kind of missed there. Just gotta make sure we see that blue line and let go. This will be called Upper Mid. And same thing, I can unlink the mask, click on the mask, Command or Control T to transform, and then hold Shift while I do that, and we can bring it up. And I'm gonna bring it up, I think, just below the T, the line of the T. Hit Enter and we've got this again i'm going to link it back together duplicate one last time for the top that's alt or option and clicking and dragging double click that top okay and then we just need to reveal the rest unlink and then select that mask command or control t to duplicate grab the bottom hold shift i'm gonna bring it all the way up to the top hit enter and there we go now if I want to fix some of these little artifacts, if I zoom in here, Commander Control Plus, I see some gray areas where there is sort of like an overlap or lack thereof. I can create that overlap. It's not going to hurt our glitch effect. So if I just unlink this again, click on the mask and um, edit this transformation, I can bring this down a little bit and that'll help uh, with getting rid of these lines. I'm going to unlink them all and just adjust each one of them individually here holding shift while I do it and just making sure that we don't have any of those little lines in between because you will be able to see those and I don't really want those in our final design and the overlap doesn't it's not a big deal since this is going to be like a glitchy effect not a big deal okay big big deal here though we got to link these all back together so make sure you click between link them all up now we can adjust these so if I have the bottom selected and I hit V for my move tool, I can just use my arrow keys left and right, or you can hold shift and use the arrow key and start to sort of glitch this thing out. So I'm gonna adjust the bottom a little by bringing it over. I might bring the lower mid over, upper mid, maybe it'll go way right, top, maybe way left like that. So now we see we have this glitchy effect already. And you can really just sort of move these to wherever you want them to be. Um, I'm just kind of adjusting them based on what I feel like looks all right. So there we go, we've got that. What I wanna do now is shift click to select all of these folders and then create a folder that includes all those. So just select them all, create a new group. And we've got a new group that has that entire folder. I'm gonna call this white because that's the color of this part of the text. And if I hold alt or option and duplicate this white folder, I now have a copy of it and I'll call this one red. See where I'm going here? All right, so there's a lot of empty space to the right of this layer. If I double click that space, it's gonna pop open my layer styles. What I actually wanna do here is use a color overlay. And this color overlay, uh, I think I called this red, so we're gonna go up here. I, you know, it's more like a, I don't know, is this cyan or something? No, I'm totally wrong, cyan's blue. Uh, this is whatever this color is, like a hot pink. I'm gonna hit okay. Hit OK. We don't see it because it's underneath. So what we can do is click on this folder again, make sure we have our move tool selected, shortcut key is V, and use those arrow keys again. And if I just start to move this around, you can already see that we're getting some of the color artifacts uh, sort of shown up here, right? Because it's underneath the white layer and we're sort of offsetting it a little bit. All right, so now we can duplicate the red layer and just kind of continue on here. We can make a green if we want really hot saturated green and we can do the same thing use our arrow keys to sort of move this green layer off to the side somewhere maybe down a little bit and left and then I can edit this name make sure it says green and same thing can duplicate remember alt or option to do that click and drag I'm gonna change that to blue double click the color overlay and we can go in here and adjust the color of this guy too just like a really saturated blue color that upper right hand corner is gonna be like the most saturated spot on that color picker. And then we can just use that move tool to adjust this blue again. So there we have it, we've got a little glitchy effect. Now to add a little bit to this, we can actually use some effects, some filters in Photoshop. So back to my background layer, I'm gonna unlock that layer, that rectangle and add some noise to it. So if I have this rectangle selected and go up to filter, I think what I need to do first is actually convert for smart filters, and that's fine. And then I can go back up to filter, go down to noise, and add a little noise. And noise is kind of reminds me of the fuzziness of like a TV television screen. 
And you can add as much as you want and adjust these Gaussian or uniform. Um, I'm gonna stick with the Gaussian, it's a little more random. Uh, the monochromatic gets rid of the color. I do want the color because you know you got the the reds, the greens, the blues in there, and you can adjust the amount, which we can obviously overdo it or bring it down a little bit. Now the other thing you can do, since this is a smart object, I could leave this at a little over what I want it and hit OK, and I can come down here to my smart filters and actually double click the uh, I don't even know what this is, the little lines and stuff down here. It's like the opacity options or the blending options. And you can drop the opacity of just the noise layer here. So I could drop it to 50% if I wanted. So now I just kind of have this texture in the background. Now you can do this if we, I mean, we've got the glitchy effect. Um, so I'm gonna show you two more things. First off, the whole thing is editable. So if I toggle down my first layer here and toggle down maybe the first top portion, I get back to this text. Remember in the beginning we created a smart object. The reason we did that is because I can double click on this text and still edit it. So if I wanted this to say pixel, pixelate instead of glitchy, I can re-edit that text. And uh, if I exit out of this, it's gonna ask me to save it. I do wanna save that smart object. And when it takes us back, it's re-edited the text. And since we use that smart object everywhere, it edits it everywhere everywhere that it exists because it's the same smart object so that's how you can edit it that's kind of the non-destructive portion of this which is really cool um, and the other piece that you can do here if i were to and i'm going to create another smart object here but if i were to put these all into a folder here we'll call it um, glitch effect what i can do with this folder is kind of the same that i did with that rectangle i can Go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. Now everything's just inside of this one smart filter, but I can apply filters to it. So if I wanted to add a little noise to this whole thing, I can do that here. You see we're adding noise to the, uh, the little pixelate text here. Uh, we can add a little noise to that. And then what we could do also, and I would just recommend playing around with some of this stuff. I'm, we're just going above and beyond here, but I could go to distort. We could do like a zigzag and kind of see what that does. There's no preview button here, but you can kind of preview up here. If you zoom out a little bit, you can see what the zigzag is going to do. Um, we'll just stick with that one and hit OK. And it kind of warps my text a little bit. So that's, that's some of what you can do. You can also go back to those um, red, green, blue layers and affect them individually. Change their sizes, change the rotation to create your own glitch effect. That's it for this tutorial. If you guys make your own effect, and if you do it not even on text, maybe you do it on an image or something different, make sure you tag me at Pixel and Bracket on whatever social media you like to use. I'd love to see what you guys create. If you have any questions, let me know down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.